And welcome to the Katie Weaver Show. This is Katie. I am so happy to be here. I'm your host. If you're listening live, it is the 11th of April at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. If you're listening to an archive or a replay, I want to welcome you here as well. Always want to let you know that I'm over in the chat room at 12radio.com. It is a Facebook chat. If you've never joined us before, just head over to 12radio.com. Click on the chat button and you'll be redirected into the chat room. Now, that's kind of a fun place to be because I also live stream my show from the chat room. So you can watch the Facebook Live, which is live now, or of course you can always just join us in the chat. There is a banner at the top of the page that says the Katie Weaver Show, and that's where everyone will be chatting. So if you have uh, anything you want to say, if you have any questions you'd like to ask me, if you need some help today with a reading or something, that would be the place to put it. If you put questions and comments in the Facebook Live, I do try to uh, track them, but I can't promise anything <laughs> because they, they move fast and I lose them and then I have no way of getting them back until after the show. So anyway, you can definitely put stuff up there, but I can't definitely help you there. <sighs> all right. Well, there's all that housekeeping, right? I hope that you guys are doing well. Uh, it looked like energetically the first part of this week is good and the energy is actually moving really fast second part of the week is not quite as uh not quite as promising but i know we'll get through it because we always do and you never know sometimes in chaotic energy other people uh thrive in that so you know it's hard to say what uh what exactly you'll do with it because again some people do amazing and chaotic energy and other people just don't so anyway you you decide we're gonna have all of our normal segments today but I do want to tell you that the topic of the show today is thriving in chaotic times and finding uh, your happy place that's what I want to talk about finding your happy place what is it for you what is your happy place is it your home? Is it another kind of sanctuary? Is it a place you go in your meditations? What does it look like for you? Hello, Miss Magnolia. Happy to have you here. Uh, seeing a bunch of you guys popping up in the chat. So anyway, that's what we're going to talk about. Finding your inner happy place. Happy, finding your inner peace. What makes you happy? How can you be happy in chaotic times? How can you just recognize what is it that actually brings you joy in your life and makes you happy? I think sometimes we get so busy going through the emotions of life that we forget that we can be happy, that we have an obligation sometimes, I think, to ourselves to look for things that brings us joy. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, but also, I really should have plenty of time to do some readings out of the chat room. So if I can help you with something, I would love to see your smiling faces there in the chat. And I'll help you with whatever I can. So that's what's going on. So as many of you know, we adopted a mini pig last week. A mini pig baby. And <laughs> she is doing fine. <laughs> Oh, you guys, I'm telling you what, being a mini pig parent is not for the faint of heart. She is quite the girl. She's two pounds, so she's just tiny. And she is absolutely running our lives. <laughs> and we're having so much fun with her, but I am amazed at what an interesting uh, little critter she is. She is nothing like having a dog or a cat. She's very opinionated. She really uh, does what she wants. Uh, we do what she wants because you can't believe the fracas that goes on around here when she wants something. Her level of screaming and yelling at us is unbelievable. It's hard to fathom that something that tiny can put up that much noise at any given time, but <laughs> she is something else. So, you know, we are cataloging our adventures with her over on her YouTube channel, which is Fiona the Mini Pig on YouTube. Uh, she has an Instagram page and a Facebook page as well because this is such a fun journey and we wanted to share it and, and let our friends and family in on the, the fun with her. 
So I did write a blog about her this week and it was published in the Glittergram in Kelly McLean's uh, newsletter, but I'll share it with you guys here as well. You can find it over at katie-weaver.com under my blogs, but it's a little article called Pig's Bite and Other Insights from the Pig Pen. <laughs> I'll just let you guys read it, but at any rate, this has been a very interesting journey so far. I have to say, Scott managed to outsmart her yesterday, and it was really funny because she's really smart, really smart, but she wants to be nursed, and, you know, we were sold a pig that, you know, brought a pig home that we were told was weaned, and I think she really wasn't weaned, or maybe just, you know in the stress of moving her, maybe she just created, you know, an a energy in her that she regressed a little bit. But the first day or two, she ate really well, and then she didn't. And every day we were doing all kinds of theatrics to try to get her to eat, and she wasn't eating uh, well at all, and I was really starting to worry about it. And so we finally decided that we were gonna go back to let it bottle feeding. And with pigs, they don't bottle feed from like a little like a little animal bottle, like a kitten bottle at all. They actually bottle feed from a bulb syringe, you know, like the little snot suckers that you use for babies. You can buy those that have a plug in the bottom so that they can be cleaned out. So that's what we use to nurse her. And so then for a couple of days, she ate really well on that, but you, it is, it, it's a, the messiest, wildest prospect to feed her with that. She basically squeals the whole time and throws food everywhere and if you're not careful you will get bit and it's fine if that's what it takes to feed her but we don't want her to get too dependent on that we wanted to get her back to eating from a dish <coughs> and Scott discovered that if you took the bulb syringe and he buried the tip of it in a dish of food she would eat all the food <laughs> so he outsmarted her tricked her into eating out of the dish and now she's back to eating out of her dish, no problem. I definitely have the bulb syringe on hand just in case because she regressed once. I, I don't know if she might do that again. She's, I think it's pretty confusing, you know, to leave her mama and come to us. And so anyway, that <laughs> that's how things are going around here. She managed to go with us to a softball tournament this weekend because I, there's no possible way of leaving her home. She is like having a newborn baby. So she spent a lot of time in the truck in her little crate. She was really happy and warm in her blankies and she got to get out and get held a little bit, but mostly she was really happy just in the warm truck and hanging out with, uh, just with her and her babies and her blankies. She likes to play ball. She likes to push a ball around with her nose. That's really cute. She likes to run around the house and explore everything and grunt and snort the whole time. I've had to uh, explain to a few one to listen clients now when I was on the phone with someone what that snorting in the background was because she's loud. <laughs> I, you know, I, I can't always get away from her. So anyway, if you call me and you hear a little snorting going on, you'll know that's because I live with a little pig. Anyway, so we're having fun. It's really been an interesting, uh, an interesting prospect. And yes, Elizabeth, she has a pig pen. She has a, they're called a hex pen. You guys that have dogs might know what they are. They're, they're like a little metal pen that you can take. We take ours camping to put, let our little chihuahuas down because uh, I'm always worried that they'll get picked up by an owl or something. But anyway, so she has her pen in the living room and in her pen, she has her litter box and her food and water and her bed and her toys. And sometimes all she wants to do is be in her pen. And other times she acts like we're killing her if we make her go in her pen. So the, the pen has decidedly mixed results depending on what kind of mood she's in. This morning I deconstructed the pen so that I could wash all of her bedding and wash her dishes and sweep and mop and you know make it a decent place to be and that really made her mad and she bit Mars and laid on Scott's shoulder and grunted and whined and cried for a while. <laughs> You, you can't not upset her sometimes. You know, we're getting there. It's it's just, it's just what it is. We're learning. Anyway, yep, so she lives in a pig pen, as do I, apparently. <laughs> I, we've had a lot of fun with pig jokes. I, we're pretty basic around here, but 
it's been it's, it's it, it, yes it has definitely made me think twice about wanting to uh, eat pork really made me think twice I, I said I don't think I'm buying any more pork products in this house it seems really wrong you know it just seems really wrong to do that I don't know yeah all right well let's get into some of our stuff around here so, oh, I do want to say this. Since we're talking about finding your inner happiness, your inner happy place, I wanted to request uh, your favorite joke. If you have a joke you want to tell me today and throw it in the chat room, I would love to see it. So if you have a joke or a meme or something that you think is hilarious that you want to share in the chat room, I want to see it because I will tell you that finding my happy place is laughter. And I know that's not the same for everybody, but for me, <clears throat> finding something to laugh about, something to lighten up the, the mood, my mood, the energy of my house or whatever's going on, is that is my happy place. And so I would love it if you guys would share something fun with me or funny that you think is hysterical or that makes you laugh for whatever reason. So I'll be keeping an eye on the chat room for that. I just wanna have a fun day. Don't we just deserve a fun day? You know, I have a fun day every day, but <laughs> that's because I live with three kids, three teenagers, and they are so dang easy to laugh at or with or at. Okay. I'm going to put a link to the magazine up in the chat room. That's where I'd like to go next. If you would like to follow along, you can click on that link. You can also just head over to my website, which is katie-weaver.com and click on the Katie's Magazine button and that'll take you to the magazine and you can follow along with us. So as always, we have all of our basic stuff in here and I wanted to share a few things. with you. So first of all, there's always a note from me here and I did, there's a video there you can click on. There's a little video there of Fiona uh, eating. That's really cute of our little pig Fiona eating, which I thought was hilarious. And it's really funny to watch her eat and to listen to her eat. But the magazine this week I called the self-care edition because it seemed like so many of the articles were about self-care. That is a huge theme this week in recognizing your own self-care habits and patterns and doing a good job with them or making some changes or just reevaluating. I think sometimes we really have to do that. All right. Okay, I'm gonna share a joke right now because it's in the Facebook Live and I don't wanna lose it. <laughs> so this is from Jennifer, she said, Two stupid chickens, each standing on the opposite side of the road. One yells, how do you get to the other side? The first yells, you are on the other side. <laughs> Isn't that how we do most things? <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Here you go. She's kicking us off strong. I'm going to read you guys something today that is something that it's, makes me laugh every time I read it. And I think that you'll think it's hysterical too. But... <coughs> Okay, <laughs> the next thing in the magazine you'll find is the 1-2 weather report. Of course, I write the 1-2 weather report for 1-2 news, and you can find it written. I do a daily postcard of the 1-2 weather report over on my Instagram page, which is Domestic Mystic on Instagram, and on my Facebook page, my fan page, which is Katie Weaver Domestic Mystic. So those are a couple of things that you can find there that you may... Uh, like to keep an eye on every day. I like that little daily reading, but I'm gonna give you the rest of the week. So starting with today, you may find some conflict around you today and you will have to stand your ground. Standing up for yourself and advocating for yourself can be a challenge as empaths struggle with choosing themselves first. This time though, you must choose and defend what is right for you. Thursday, you are on your own today, as everyone seems to be a little withdrawn. Try not to take it personally. It actually has nothing to do with you. Rather than nurse hurt feelings and rejection, 
made plans to do something for yourself, this would be a great time for some self-care, like a massage. Friday, buckle your seatbelt. It is going to be a bumpy ride. You may find disruption at every turn. At work, authority figures will be grasping for some control. In relationships, we are likely to see some selfish behavior. Recognize that everyone is just trying to survive right now and try not to take it personally. Saturday, you have some choices ahead of you that may be making you feel panicky. Do not fall for the illusion that you must make a decision right now. It isn't true. Take a little time to evaluate financial decisions as well as any pending changes in employment, relationships, and housing. Things will fall into place if you can be patient and allow yourself to make well thought out decisions. And Sunday, this would be a good day to talk to a trusted friend, advisor, or even a wise relative. You have some fear about your security bubbling to the surface that needs to be talked about. Be honest and clear about how you are feeling and work together to seek a plan of action. So that is the one two weather report for the week. All right, and then we have my video reading for this month. I have a reading special. It is my video reading. It's a past life channeling. I'll channel three lives for you uh, and focusing on lives that you were a powerhouse, you were a badass, you were tough, you were powerful, you were successful in some way that we can pull to the surface in this life and help you understand maybe a little bit more about who you are and where some of the traits that you carry came from. So this is a fun channeling. So if you want to look at it, I posted a link in the chat room. You can also just go over to one 2 and click on uh, and find me, Katie Weaver, and look into my email readings and you'll find it there. But that's my video uh, specialty, or that's my reading special this month. I will say though that tomorrow, tomorrow is one two day which is the biggest day around 1-2 World. Uh, there'll be a ton of specials and sales and I'll have some special stuff together for you tomorrow as well. Alrighty, and then we have our crystal guidance from Christy. Christy, of course, is our master crystallogist around here and she brings us our crystal for the day or for the week and it is selenite. So selenite is, if you're in the Facebook Live, I'm showing you a gigantic piece of selenite. This is a big piece that I keep with my plants. I like to put selenite not in my plants but around them. I feel like it helps to keep the energy around them clear and helps them stay healthy. So this big piece, I have another piece that's a little smaller than this too, that just travel around my house and every once in a while I move it and put it around some of the other plants but putting it around the plant seems to help them to stay healthier. Selenite is known as the great transmuter. It clears and transmutes low vibrating energy into light it brings balance to the energy body. So lots of good reasons to have some selenite around. You can also get selenite, uh, you can buy the selenite tower as a selenite lamp. So basically the inside of it is hollowed out and it has a, you can put a light in it, a little light bulb in it. I have one of those and they are so cool. They look like a cathedral, you know, they're tall and they're so beautiful, but they're a natural air purifier. So selenite is ancient salt, and so if you get the Himalayan salt lamps or a selenite lamp, you're going to get similar properties. But what they do, the way crystal uh, properties are released is by applying heat or pressure. So when you put your little light bulb in there, it warms them up a little bit and it activates their properties. So it's a great way to have some selenite in your house. But one of the interesting things about selenite or about salt lamps is that they are natural air purifiers. What they do is they, when you heat them, they release negative ions that help to neutralize all of the positive ions that your, or maybe I'm saying it backwards. They help to neutralize all of the ions that your electronics are putting off. So they help to uh, neutralize the air uh, pollution in your home or the e-wave pollution in your home, but they also attract to them 
water molecules in your home and absorb them. So they are actually like scientifically known as uh, an air purifier as well. So they're awesome. So have one, have some. I love them so much. So anyway, there you go. So that's my biggie, but <laughs> looks like you can beat up a bad guy with this, doesn't it? That's why I keep it around. No, <laughs> but that would transmute somebody. <laughs> okay, I know, I think I'm so funny. Okay, now moving on, our, <coughs> excuse me, our uh, reading this week from Christy. She gives us her Kindred Spirits Energy Oracle reading, and her card this week is Archangel Zadkiel. So the primary message is Divine Connection, Crown Chakra, Knowledge, Wisdom, Open to Guidance, and Higher Self. The challenge is feeling disconnected blocked and shut down and the crystal is selenite obviously <laughs> so the meditation is dear archangel zadkiel please bring me clarity connection to my higher self and messages from my guides so one more time dear archangel zadkiel please bring me clarity connection to my higher self and messages from my guides so there you go. And definitely take a look at Christie's uh, oracle cards. They are so beautiful. The, the image of Zadkiel is really cool. Okay, very good. So then of course we have our weekly wisdom from Jamie Dawn. And then I want to, one more thing from the magazine today I wanted to share with you. Oh, Kelly's article. So Kelly, uh, Kelly McLean, of course she's the uh, author of Bitch Scope. She has a show here on Tuesdays. Her article this week is called We Are All Queens. And it is so empowering for women. I hope that you all take a minute to read it when you have a chance. So empowering. She shares the, uh, the iconic poem from Maya Angelou, I, or Still I Rise, and absolutely loved what she had to say. So Anyway, I do hope you have a chance to read Kelly's article. That's one that I wanted to highlight this week for sure. And then uh, the tip of the week this week. The tip of the week is a service tip. So the tip is feeling stuck, throw yourself into service. When you are feeling lost, stuck, or depressed, look for ways to serve others. Service boosts self-esteem, offers perspective, and creates a feeling of well-being. And I don't know about you guys, but that is certainly true for me. So remember that when you are feeling low, when you're feeling crappy, when you're feeling like, you know, you're stuck and your life's not doing what you want it to, consider ways you could put yourself into service. You know, when we say service, I think a lot of people jump into or, or kind of their mind goes straight to a place of like big volunteering time or sending a check somewhere or, you know, things that uh, take a lot from you or, or maybe take way more time than you really have to give. And I think that you have to get really creative with service because the truth is a lot of you, you're, you are doing all you can in so many ways. And you can't be really expected to put out more financially and maybe you don't have a lot more of your time to give. And so consider service in tiny things in all of the little drops that you throw into the ocean, right? Consider things like random acts of kindness, like buying someone's coffee, like handing somebody on the street some money or some food, like giving somebody a smile and, and some kindness, like when the telemarketer calls you on the phone that you're kind to them, recognizing that that's somebody's kid, you know, and all of the little ways that you can offer service right? In recognizing when someone's struggling with their kids and helping in the grocery store or when someone obviously needs some an extra hand or just all of the little things. We walk past a billion chances to be of service every single day and sometimes we do and sometimes we don't and there's no judgment. There's no judgment because you guys all I know are doing the best you can but if you're feeling stuck and you're feeling like you need to generate more positive energy around you, service is a really quick and easy way to do that. All right, so that's the tip this week. 
And then the last thing I wanted to share is my class. So I do have a class coming up on uh, at the end of the month, on the 29th. It is my Accessing Your Inner Alchemist, Ethereal Alchemy Part 1. And then I'll teach Ethereal Alchemy Part 2, two weeks after that. So this is dealing with learning how to use ethereal crystals and learning how to use ethereal metals and then combining the two of them to create a new element or a new product to use in healing. And so it's all spirit work. I think that uh, you guys are going to love this process. I have benefited from it a lot in uh, doing energy work and working with clients and also just in working on myself and my home and my own animals. And I'm really excited to teach it because I think you guys are going to benefit from it a lot. So, <coughs> excuse me. So definitely uh, come, come to class. You will uh, probably want to have a little background in energy work, but if you don't, and this class just sings to your soul and you want to do it, come do it. No judgment. Okay. <laughs> so many things to cover today. And I think let's do our singing bowl work next. So I want to help you guys out a little bit with grounding. That's one thing I'm hearing from a lot of you this week is not feeling very grounded, uh, feeling really uh, cerebral, stuck in your head, stuck up in your crown. So let's do a little grounding work together. So I will play the bowl and I want you to just picture red tree roots growing out of your feet, growing deep, deep, deep down into the earth and grounding you to the energy of the earth. And while I, you do that, I will play the bowl. This is in the note of C. C resonates with the root chakra and the energy or the vibration of the bowl is just going to help you to do your work. So, easy enough. So, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and shift your con consciousness <laughs> to your root and let's get started. you feeling a little more grounded now of course that's an exercise you can always do without the bowl we are just cheating and <laughs> using the bowl to help us out and get a faster and stronger ground but you can do that any time to help you get more grounded more centered and more into your space so there you go all righty well let's do our ground bless protect and move reading for the week so of course this is my deck this is the deck that i published with the psychic sisters here a few months ago and of course this deck has five different elements to it it has ground cards bless cards protect cards move cards and boost cards so we're going to pull our cards here and do a weekly reading so I'll pull cards from every uh, element so that we have some good guidance on some spiritual self-care for the week. So important. And I think we just, sometimes you just, I think you need a little, some ideas, you know, some encouragement to do some good self-care. 
We're so, we get so wrapped up in so many other parts of our lives, right? And basically everything you do is to support your physical body in some way. Maybe not everything, but many things, right? I mean, at the end of the day, the survival of the physical body is our most basic need. And so you consider all of the steps that you take to support the physical body, they're vital. But what does the spirit body get? Sometimes neglected. So that's the point of this deck. And you can get the cards if you just go over to katie-weaver.com. There's a link for Katie's Oracle Talk cards and you can check them out right there and order yourself a deck if you would like them. There's also a book. The book is at Amazon and you can find that. Uh, you can just go to Amazon and Google Ground Bless Protect and Move. There, there's an ebook and there's also a written book if you'd like to order it. So either way, the deck itself, this is the only drawback with self-publishing a deck, the deck itself doesn't come with a book. I wish it did, I wish I could do it differently, but that's how it is right now. So you have to buy the deck and the book separately, or you just could buy the book. I think you could just buy the ebook and have that as a resource and probably you do just as well. So it's up to you. If you wanna have your hands on the cards, that's your choice. All right, so the ground card is tree, which makes me laugh because we just did a grounding exercise just like that. But to stay grounded this week, Send those tree roots into the earth, like we discussed. But also, I like the actual uh, activity of grounding with a tree. So, when they tell you to hug a tree, maybe this is what they were talking about. Sit with your back at the er, with a, your back <laughs> against the uh, trunk of a tree, or push your arms around a tree. But connect to a tree. Allow your energy to melt into the energy of the tree and to really sink down into the earth, into the roots of the tree. That is really, really grounding. So that is the ground card. The bless card is space. So blessing your space, and I love this because it, we're talking today about your sanctuary. What is it that is, you know, your happy place? Well, you have to bless your space. So, I like the card because I think she's got it right, right? So holding your hands out, allowing a powerful pillar of light to pour down from the universe and over the top of your head, passing through your body and out your hands and filling your space with white light is a really easy and productive way to help clear your space and bless your space. So all the while holding the intentions of what you want the space to feel like. Do you want it to feel peaceful? Do you want it to feel compassionate, comforting, safe, comfortable, fun, joyful, happy, peaceful, restful, whatever you decide, right? It's up to you, but in somehow, some way, bless your space with what you want it to do, how you want it to feel. All right, the protect card is talisman. So a talisman can be anything really. Most people use something like a necklace or a little figurine, but something that you can bless with your intentions and carry with you. I, pro I know I've probably told you guys this story before, but my son, my, my football playing son, was actually a very bully kid when he was in grade school. He, we had one specific bully that just, Micah was his target and we went through some really tough years with it and really struggled with the school and it was a hard time. And Micah was such a, he's such an empathic kid that he just, fighting back was not in his, uh, just not in his wheelhouse. And when they finally got out of grade school, I was so glad because they were moving on to the middle school, which is a much larger school with a lot more kids. And I thought maybe we would finally get away from this stupid kid and his mean stuff, you know? And the first day of middle school, he punched Micah in the stomach on the bus and actually got removed from the school bus over it. Uh, the, the bully did, not Micah, but you know, I mean, the, the school was trying, but this kid was sneaky and he was just, 
just a butt, you know? And so anyway, what I finally did is I took a talisman. I had a, a jade amulet that was a dragon and a phoenix. And my husband really resonates with the energy of the phoenix. And my son really resonates with the energy of the dragon. So I took this amulet that had those two things and I blessed it with what I wanted it to do, which was to create a safe zone for my son to go to school and be safe from this bully and also to have the tools he needed to protect himself from the bully because the school wasn't doing it. They just, I, I just think they couldn't, I don't know. Sometimes I think they didn't go far enough, but you know, that's probably a conversation for another day. But anyway, his dad also took the amulet and blessed it. And then he took the amulet and blessed it. So the three of us all put our energy and intentions in it. He put it around his neck. He wore it to school the next day. There was an incident with the kid uh, during lunch and my son turned around and stood up to him in a way that was different than I had anticipated. I honestly wanted him to fight back. I thought maybe if he would just finally fight back, this kid would back off. I think that that actually sometimes works with, with bullying situations, but uh, <clears throat> he didn't. It, it's not his way. He fought back with the words. He actually, uh, in this kid's attempt to humiliate my son, my son kind of turned it around and humiliated him. And the kid slunk away embarrassed and was laughed at by other kids. And not that I want that to happen, but guess what? It ended that day. There was never another incident with that kid after that day. And that was the day that he wore his talisman. And I was so blown away by that. And I've always thought about that. And I, I often will take a something, a crystal, a necklace or something and charge it for one of my kids when they have something going on that they need a little extra boost or a little extra confidence. But anyway, I wanted to share that because I think talisman, the talisman card for protection is a really powerful one to remember. All right, the move card is Tai Chi. I adore Tai Chi, so... Uh, yeah, I do Qigong, but here's the thing. The move card just means that you need to do something to move the energy in your body. Move is a part of spiritual self-care because moving yourself in some way, and I don't mean you have to go run a 5K, just moving yourself in some way helps to release stuck energy. It helps to boost the happy hormones in your brain and just basically helps you to feel good. So the, the card this week is Tai Chi. If you've never done Tai Chi, it is a fantastic way to gather energy, to boost your energy, to move energy. That's basically the whole, uh, the, the study, the philosophy of Tai Chi. It's easy. It's not supposed to be hard. It's not supposed to be strenuous. I'm actually a level one Qigong teacher and I love it. I do it in the pool all the time, actually. But uh, anyway, you might, if you're interested, find a little uh, YouTube video and try it a little bit, or take a walk around the block or stretch a little bit, but do something that moves your body in some way that just helps to release what could be stuck. And then the boost card is just right. So that's right, it's time to write. Journal, blog, or notebook, you can't make the wrong choice when you are spilling your guts. Use this as an opportunity to release anything you need to release. So what is it? What do you need to write down? I have been feeling really drawn lately uh, to, for myself, but also to ask you guys to be sure that you are writing your own memoirs. Make sure you're writing your own histories, that you're writing down your own stuff. It's important. Whether it's just for you or it's for your posterity, it doesn't matter but make sure that you are writing your stories. Nobody's going to do that for you. All right. So, <laughs> so there you go. I have, again, I want to, I want to have fun today. I'm going to read you something that I think is hilarious. Because I want to give you a boost. I think we don't have enough fun. And 
So I'm going to read you something that makes me laugh. I asked you to share me uh, a joke or something that makes you laugh so that we can just laugh together today. Remember, we're finding our happy place. And so for me, that's about having fun. I know for some people it's about taking a nap, but it's not for me. <laughs> All right, what I'm going to read you is a blog called Surviving Whole Foods. You may have heard this before, but it's always worth another. Okay. Whole Foods is like Vegas. You go there to feel good, but you leave broke, disoriented, and with the newfound knowledge that you have a vaginal disease. Unlike Vegas, Whole Foods clientele are all about mindfulness and compassion. Until they get to the parking lot, then it's war. As I pull up this morning, I see a pregnant lady on the crosswalk holding a baby and groceries. The driver swerves around her and honks. As he speeds off, I catch his bumper sticker, which says, Namaste. Poor lady didn't even hear him approaching because he was driving a Prius. He crept up on her like a panther. <laughs> As the great sliding glass doors part, I am immediately smacked in the face by a wall of cool, moist air that smells of strawberries and orchids. I leave behind the concrete jungle and enter a cornucopia of organic bliss, the land of hemp milk and honey. Seriously, think about heaven and then think about Whole Foods. They're basically the same. The first thing I see is the Great Wall of Kombuka, 42 different kinds of rotten tea. Fun fact, the word Kombuka is Japanese for I jizzed in your tea. Anyone who's ever swallowed the glob of mucus at the end of the bottle knows exactly what I'm talking about. I believe this thing is called the mother, which makes it that much creepier. <laughs> Next, I see the gluten-free section filled with crackers and bread made from various wheat substitutes such as cardboard and sawdust. I skip this aisle because I'm not rich enough to have dietary restrictions. Ever notice that you don't meet poor people with special diet needs? A gluten intolerant house cleaner? A cab driver with candida? Candida is what I call a rich white person problem. You know you've really made it in this world when you get candida. My personal theory is that candida is something you can get from too much hot yoga. All I'm saying is if I were a yeast, I would want to live in your yoga pants. Next, I approach the beauty aisle. There is a scary looking machine there that you put your face inside of and it tells you exactly how ugly you are. They calculate your wrinkles, sunspots, the size of your pores, etc., and compare it to other women your age. I think of myself as attractive, but as it turns out, I am 78% ugly, meaning less pretty than 78% of women in the world. On the popular one to 10 hotness scale used by males the world over, that makes me a three, if you round up, which I hope you will. <laughs> a glance at the extremely close up picture they took of my face, in which I somehow have a glorious blonde porn mustache, tells me that three is about right, especially because the left side of my face is apparently 20% more aged than the right. Fantastic. After contemplating ending it all here and now, I decide instead to buy their product. One bottle of delicious smelling, silky feeling cream that is maybe going to raise me from a three to a four for only $108, which is a pretty good deal when you think about it. I then grab a handful of peanut butter pretzels on my way out of this stupid aisle. I don't feel bad about pilfering these bites because of the umpteen times that I have overpaid at the salad bar and been tricked into buying $108, $108 beauty creams. The pretzels are very fattening, but I'm already in the 70th percentile of ugly, so who cares? Next, I come to the vitamin aisle, which is a danger zone for any broke hypochondriac. <laughs> Warning, Whole Foods keeps their best people in this section. Although you think she's a homeless person at first, that vitamin clerk is an ex-pharmaceutical sales rep. Today, she talks me into buying estrogen for my mystery mustache and women's acidophilus because apparently I do have candida after all. 
I move on to the next aisle and ask the nearest Whole Foods clerk for help. He's wearing a visor inside, and if that weren't douchey enough, it has one word on it in all caps. Yup. Namaste. I ask him where I can find the whole wheat bread. He chuckles at me and says, oh, we keep the poison on aisle seven. Based solely on the attitudes of people sporting namaste paraphernalia today, I'd think it was Sanskrit for go fuck yourself. I pass the table where the guy invites me to join a group cleanse he's leading. For $179.99, I can not eat alone or not alone. Not going to happen. They're doing the cleanse where you consume nothing but lemon juice, cayenne pepper, and fiber pills for 10 days. What's that one called again? Oh yeah, anorexia. I went on a cleanse once. It was a mixed blessing. On one hand, I detoxified, I purified, I lost weight. On the other hand, I fell asleep on the highway, fantasized about eating a pigeon, and crapped my pants. I think I'll stick with the whole eating thing. I grab a couple of loaves of poison and head to check out. The fact that I am at Whole Foods on a Sunday finally sinks in when I join the end of the line, halfway down the dog food aisle. I suddenly realize that I am dying to get out of this store. Maybe it's the lonely feeling of being a carnivore in a sea of vegans, or the newfound knowledge that some people's dogs eat better than I do. But mostly, I think it's the fact that Yanni has been playing literally the entire time. Like sensory deprivation, listening to Yanni seems harmless at first, enjoyable even. But two hours in, you will chew off your own ear to make it stop. A thousand minutes later, I get to the cashier. She is 95% beautiful. Have you brought your reusable bags? Fuck no. They are at home with their two dozen once used friends. She rings up my meat, alcohol, gluten, and a wrapper from the chocolate bar I ate in line with thinly veiled alarm. She scans my lady's acidophilus, gives me a pitying frown and whispers, you know, if you wanna get rid of your candida, you should stop feeding it. She rings me up for $313. I resist the urge to unwrap and swallow whole another $6 protest or truffle. <laughs> I'm going to start that over. I resist the urge to unwrap and swallow whole another $6 truffle in protest. Barely. Instead, I reach for my wallet, flash her a quiet smile and say, Namaste. <laughs> I love that blog. I hope I didn't offend anyone. I know it has little language in it, but that makes me laugh so hard. Now I have to tell you that the author of it is an actress named Kelly McLean. Not our Kelly McLean, a different one. So you might want to look her up. I'm going to put a link to this in the chat room in case you guys want to hold on to it for later. But when I talk about being in my happy place, I think about things that make me laugh and that makes me laugh. And I have to tell you, ever since reading that, I've used that word namaste with a little different <laughs> intention a time or two. <laughs> okay, I am going to put a link here in the chat room for you. If you want to look that up, it's called Surviving Whole Foods. That's what the blog is called, Surviving Whole Foods. It's a classic. Okay. <laughs> I have to also tell you, several people have sent me links this week to a comedian who I don't think she's actually new. She's just got some attention right now. But her name is uh, Mrs. Hughes. She's a lady in her, I would say, 60s at least. Uh, oh my God, she's hysterical. So if you need some more laughs today or sometime this week, look up the comedian named Mrs. Hughes. It's uh, H-U-G-H-E-S. So funny. So funny. And, uh, well, she talks about going to the gynecologist in a way that uh, I think all women can relate to. So, anyway, make sure that you look for Mrs. Hughes for a little more laughter. Okay, Raven says that was hilarious. Deborah said, oh my goodness, I just tuned in and I'm rolling on my side laughing. 
I think anyone who's gone to Whole Foods can definitely relate to that, right? Last time we were in Whole Foods, we don't have a Whole Foods around here. I should say that. We don't have one. I would have to go four hours from home to get to a Whole Foods. But I have been in them, you know, in other cities with my sisters. And last time we were in them, they had all of this fish oil with little cups so that you could sample it. What? It had all different kinds of flavors. And what? Anyway, I tried really hard to make Kara sample the fish oil. I was ready to take a video and everything, and she totally refused to do it. And I tried to tempt her with all of the different flavors, and to no avail. She didn't want mint-flavored fish oil. She didn't want lemon-flavored fish oil. She didn't even want fish-flavored fish oil. None of it. And I couldn't sample it because, well, hell no to that. <laughs> I think we could all relate to uh, going in Whole Foods and feeling just exactly like that. Especially that $313 uh, grocery bill, right? You can't go in Whole, Field, Whole Foods and not spend an utter fortune. I know some people call it Whole Paycheck. Now, certainly it has its perks. And if you love Whole Foods, I hope I don't offend you. I'm just joking. I'm laughing. But... <laughs> I know some people like Trader Joe's better some people have local stores they like better some people just stick with Walmart I don't care no judgment here but my goal today was to put a smile on your face and so if I did that mission accomplished okay back into the chat room <laughs> Liliana says, I would love a message on my husband's new business. This morning we had a financial issue. I'm hoping things will get better. You know, Liliana, they will get better, but it is, this is definitely going to be a, a slow build. And it's going to definitely require some patience and I think some um, creativity in finding a few other ways to bring in money. And so... He may want to diversify a little bit or have something on the side going as well for a little while. I feel like the business can and will grow, but you're, you may need a little supplement to your income for a while. While it does that, so that you can give it the patience it needs to get to the point where you're making some money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Eva, I'm glad I made you laugh. Jane says... Should add, take me to a four for 108, oh, for 108 days only. I may need to add that to the blog. <laughs> she says, my hate Ashbury Whole Foods has the most stuck up employees. Oy. Well, Jane, now you know, you just tell them, namaste. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, fish oil is gross, Raven. I agree with you, gross. Now, maybe it has good health benefits. Frankly, um, as a girl who has arthritis, I probably should take whole, or you know, fish oil, but I don't want to go sample it in little cups at Whole Foods because I wouldn't have any alcohol or coffee to chase it down with standing right there, right? Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> ew. ew. I can't even. The, the thought of that makes me think, oh, yeah, I feel like I'm going to retch. Okay. You guys don't know this, but I'm a retcher. I'm one of those people that if you see or hear something gross, you can't help but let out a loud, audible wretch. My kids think it's really funny. Uh, I don't. <laughs> but the, just the thought of the fish oil makes me want to wretch loudly. All right. Well, guess what? Here we are. We've done it. We've talked down to the end of the show. So a couple of things. You can find me tomorrow with the Psychic Sisters, having all kinds of fun here on 1-2 Radio. You can find me on Monday with the 1-2 uh, News Show, and then of course back here next Wednesday. Also, you'll find me over at 1-2 Listen as soon as the show's over, and for the rest of the day, and then tomorrow, of course, watch for all wonderful things 1-2 Day as well. So lots of great things happening. So thanks, you guys, so much for being here. Please stay tuned. There's lots more great radio to come here on 1-2 Radio, where we are changing the way you laugh with the world.